Hello and welcome back to our videos. Today we are going over Unit 10 and can you believe that we are already starting Unit 10? It's crazy, I know. Um, so we're going to review multiplying and dividing integers today. So at the front of your notebook, make sure you're writing in that units of study for Unit 10, which is SOL 6.6a and b. And then you were going to turn in your notebook till you find some blank pages. You have your little spiral down the middle. And then it says unit 10 operations with integers. That's what you should write in there. And then you can also put that little dotted line there. Or not the dotted line. You guys do a fold. But I have to do the dotted line to show that little corner fold. All right. So we're going to start off by just multiplying some just typical numbers like we've been doing for most of the year. So take a second, get this part copied in, and then go ahead and solve those three problems for me. So if you look at the first one, 6 times 7 is going to give you 42. 4 times 10 would be 40. And 12 times 5 would be 60. So that's just your basic multiplication no integers. Remember, integers are those positive and negative whole numbers. So these are just positive numbers, no negatives. Now, multiplication is actually what we call repeated addition. And you may have talked about this in elementary school. So example for this, we could write this out, this multiplication. And remember, when numbers are smushed together, that's actually telling you that it is multiplication. So if you need to draw in a little dot, you can do that. And we're going to write this out as repeated addition. So 3 times 6 can also be written as 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3. And that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 3 times 6 can actually be written out as 3 plus 3 6 times. And if I add those together, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, and then 18, this would equal 18. So 3 times 6 is the same as adding up all the 3's is the same as 18. If we do the next one, 4 times 5, and if you need to slide in that dot, it's going to be 4 added together 5 times. 4 times 5. 4, 5 times. And if I add those all together, 4 times 5, or 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4, will give me 20. All right, now things get a little bit more interesting when we have this negative with the 5, and it's being multiplied. So I have to write out negative 5 five times. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a parenthesis to hold the negative with the 5. Because if I don't hold the negative with the 5, it might um, not draw your eye to it. And it can also mean something else mathematically. So we have negative five, three times. And if you need to think about a number line, I could go, so this is zero, and I could go negative one, two, three, four, five. So that would be negative five. And then I have to go negative five more. So negative 5, negative 6, negative 7, negative 8, negative 9, negative 10. And then I have to go negative 5, 5 more. Negative 11, negative 12, negative 13, 14, and negative 15. So that's how I get an answer of negative 15. I want you to try that negative 7 times 2. So go ahead, take a second, see if you can write that out as repeated addition, and figure out what would the answer be. So when you write this one out, it would be negative 7 plus negative 7. And negative 7 plus negative 7 would be a negative 14. Because if you think about it on the number line, if this is 0, negative 1, negative 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So there's the first negative 7. And then I have to go negative 7 more. Negative 8, 9, 10, negative 11, negative 12, 13, and 14. So there's negative 14. So you can use number lines to help you with this activity. 
Now the challenging one is this four times negative six. And I don't know, well, you can remember with multiplication, I can do the same, five times three is the same as three times five, because to do four negative six times is not really going to work out very well. I can't go negative six. So I'm actually gonna change the order of this. I'm gonna change it so it's negative six times four. So I'm gonna write out the negative six four times, negative six plus negative six plus negative six plus negative six. And if I go negative six four times, that's going to give me an answer of negative 24. And you could write it out on the number line if you wanted to. So that's how multiplication is repeated addition. And if we think about this, in terms of like a relationship. These are both positive numbers. So I have a very positive person, I have another very positive person, and they become, they get into a relationship and they end up with a positive relationship because they're both happy with each other. Same thing with the four and the five. The four is a happy person, the five is a happy person because they're both positive. So they're both going to be in a happy relationship. Now things kind of take a turn whenever we have a negative personality and a positive personality. They don't have the same personality, so therefore they're going to have a negative relationship. Same thing with this one. I have a negative personality and a positive personality. If you put a negative and a positive person together, they may not get along. So that's why they have a negative relationship. Now I want you to think, and here's some rules for you. So we have a positive multiplier or divided by a positive gave us a positive relationship. So if I have a very positive person and another very positive person, they're going to have a positive relationship. If I have another positive person and a negative person, their relationship's probably not going to work, so they're going to have a very negative relationship. They're not going to work well together. But here's the interesting one. This negative person and a negative person. Well, if they're both negative together in their relationship with each other, they're probably going to get along and they're probably going to have a very good relationship together. So this one's kind of funny. When you have a, a negative multiplier divided by a negative, you actually end up with a positive result because they're happy together. They're both negative. And I'm going to show you another pictorial way of remembering that, but that's my like little story way to help you with that one. All right, so here's some practice. And here's that little pictorial representation that we're gonna draw a lot this unit. And this only works for multiplication and division. So do not try to apply this triangle to addition. But if you draw a triangle and then you draw a little T inside, you can put your positive up top and your negatives at the bottom. So positive floats to the top, negatives on the bottom. And the way you can use this, and I'm gonna draw it for each problem that I do, we have a, change my color. I know that four times three, because this is multiply, remember squished is multiplying if you need to write a note, is multiply. So four times three is 12. <laughs> Now I have a negative with a negative, so I'm left with a positive result. So it's just positive 12. You do not have to put the positive on that 12. It's just assumed, if it's not written there, that it is positive. So the answer for this one is 12. Again, I'm going to rewrite my triangle for the next one. Positive floats to the top, negatives on the bottom. I have a negative times a negative, which gives me a positive answer, and 4 times 4 is 16. So I just get a positive 16. So do you see I'm crossing out the ones that I'm using and circling what's left to be my sign? So here's my next one. Positive floats to the top, negative sit on the bottom. I have a negative 25 and a positive 5, so I'm left with a negative, and 25 divided by 5 is 5. 
And then here's my last one, positive floats to the top, negatives on the bottom. I have a negative divided by a positive, so I'm left with a negative answer. And 16 divided by 4 would be 4. So my final answer is a negative 4. And if you need to rewatch that piece again, go ahead. But I recommend that you draw the triangles for every problem that you do. So here are six practice problems. Like I said, I do recommend draw the triangle for each one, cross out the pieces that you're using, circle what's left, and then just multiply like normal. So go ahead, take a pause, see if you can answer all six of those problems for me. So for the first one, I have a negative and a negative with a positive left, and 5 times 3 is 15. I have a negative with a positive, so the answer should be negative, and 18 divided by 3 is 6. I have a negative with a positive, so I'm left with a negative. 6 times 2 is 12. I have a negative with a positive, so I have a negative answer left, and 11 times 4 is 44, so I end up with an answer of negative 44. I have a negative and a positive, so I'm left with a negative. 12 divided by 2 is 6, so I end up with a negative 6. And then for the last one, I have a negative and a negative, so I'm left with a positive answer, and 40 divided by 8 is 5. So that is all you have to do. You're just using your regular multiplication and division rules, and we just added the triangle to help you figure out which sign it is. So if you have any questions, make sure you let your teacher know, and I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your day.